If you're thankful for another day, let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise, a shout of praise, whatever you feel like doing in this place this morning. Thank you, Lord, for another day, God. Thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Amen. I will rejoice and be glad. Shout unto God. We praise you, God.
morning, everybody. Hey, Amen. What a beautiful, rainy morning it is. I would say if y'all had been on time today or a little early, you wouldn't have got wet. But I'm glad that you came. I think we got everybody in, and it's so good to see you. I want you to step out in the aisles and greet one another this morning. We're so glad that you're here. And all of our first-time guests, welcome to Open Door Apostolic on Sunday morning. Amen. We are so happy that you're here, each and every one of you. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We want our ushers to come this morning. It's time to receive our tithe and offering this morning. And uh, got folks coming back. Got folks still gone, traveling, and, and we miss all of them. Summer is amazingly coming to an end. Uh, how many parents are glad school starts tomorrow? Amen. Several of you. Amen. How many, well, most of the kids aren't in here, but how many kids that are in here are glad school starts tomorrow? Luke. All right. I've always wondered about you, Luke. I've always wondered. Amen. Love and appreciate. We had a wedding yesterday, and I 
think that we tried to tie the knot real good and tight and had a good time and appreciate everybody that came out and participated in that and we're happy brother and sister Moffin are here and their family uh, we got a good group of our young people are at another church this morning doing a back to school uh, rally for them so we want to pray that they will be a blessing and and uh, be safe and so just thank God for each and every one of you would you pray with me right now God we love and thank you for this day we thank you Lord for you've been our provider God our protector God our physician we thank you Lord for your word the power of your word the power of your name this morning God we thank you Lord for the blessings that you've given to us God and it's our privilege God with cheerful hearts to give back today God to work and help the kingdom of God God bless each giver this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Worship with the praise team as they're going to sing one more song this morning.
praise the Lord. Amen. Would you stand one more time with me this morning? We're going to, uh, so happy that uh, Brother and Sister Moppin are here and uh, met him a good time back and fell in love with him and appreciate him. And, and his wife and family has really made him a better person. Do you all believe that? Amen. I believe that so much. And, and uh, we honor them. Uh, preachers are better when their family's with them. And uh, uh, so let's give him a great big welcome this morning as he comes. God bless you. Let's give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's good all the time, and all the time he is good. Come on, let's give him a good praise. But the Bible goes one step further. It says he's great and greatly to be praised. Now let's give him a great praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome God we serve, and I'm so thankful that I know him today. I'm so thankful to be in his presence, in his house, with his people, and excited about what God is doing and what God is going to do in the future and i'm excited what he's already done aren't you thankful what he's done in your past well i thought i'd get a better response you thankful what he's done in your past and what he's doing right now and what he's going to do in your future he's a great god today if you have your bibles turn with me to genesis 41 51 as you're turning once again i want to give great honor to your pastor and his wife and family love and appreciate them so much. and uh, They have been so good to me and my family, and I'm so thankful that my family's here. And yes, they do make me better. Amen. I'm not just saying that because my wife's standing over there. But I love and appreciate them and love and appreciate this church so much. So many dear friends, so many people uh, that I feel like are family to me, and I just want to say how much I appreciate you today. Genesis 41:51 says, and Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh. For God said, he hath made me forget all of my toil and all my father's house. I want to preach to you today for a few moments. I want to preach on this thought, a Manasseh moment. A Manasseh moment. I believe God wants you to have a Manasseh moment today before you leave. If you'd set your Bibles down, lift your hands and hearts to heaven. Let's pray right now. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your strength. God, we ask you right now, Lord, to anoint the lips of clay to preach your anointed word. Speak to your people in this place here today. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to let us all have Manasseh moments before we leave this house, God. Help us to forget some things, God. Lord, let us leave this place different than when we came in. God, if there's anyone here that needs the Holy Ghost, I ask you to fill them, Lord. If there's anyone here that's not been baptized in your name, God, I ask you to do that today. God, if there's someone sick, let them be healed. If there's someone bound, let them be delivered today. God, put the broken pieces of lives back together in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's clap our hands to him one more time. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's a great God. He's a great God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You may be seated today. If you know the story of Joseph, you understand that Joseph had a right to be bitter. Joseph had a right of all the people in the Word to be bitter because Joseph was done wrong. His brothers were jealous of him. And they did him wrong. They, uh, they abused him. They sold him into slavery. And then while in slavery, he was done wrong. Uh, the person who purchased him's wife falsely accused him, and he was sent to prison. And then while in prison, God was still had his hand on him and was using him. But in prison, he was done wrong because he interpreted a dream, and that person was supposed to remember him and forgot about him. So Joseph's life is a life of turmoil. His life is a life that he could have been very easily bitter over because of all that went wrong in his life. But when Joseph gave birth to his firstborn, his wife gave birth to their firstborn son, 
He didn't name his son Benoniah after like his brother's first name was. Could have because that means son of sorrow. He could have named his son Mara, which means bitter. That would have been a good, a good word to use for his life. He could have used the word Jabez, which means born in sorrow. All could have been good names for his firstborn to talk about the life that he had lived. But instead, Joseph decided to name his son Manasseh, which means God hath made me forget. Joseph was saying, I could hold grudges if I want to. I could be bitter if I want to. But instead of holding grudges and instead of being bitter, instead of giving my son a name of bitterness, and instead of giving my son a name uh, that will carry, that'll carry, that he'll carry to the grave, instead I'm going to name him Manasseh, which means God hath made me to forget. I want to forget all that's been done wrong to me. I want to forget all of my past. I want to forget all the things that have happened to me. And I want to move forward with my life. And I can't help but think today that God is wanting to give somebody a Manasseh moment. God wants somebody to birth a Manasseh in your spirit. And you leave this place saying, I'm going to forget about my past. I'm going to forget about the hurt. I'm going to forget about the pain. I'm going to forget about the things that have went wrong in my life Jesus tells us in his word in Luke 6 37 he said judge not and you shall not be judged condemn not and you shall not be condemned and then Jesus says forgive and you shall be forgiven Mark eleven twenty five. 25 Jesus speaking again he said when you stand praying forgive if you have all against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. We can see by the words of Jesus today. This isn't the words of Michael. This isn't the words of Pastor. But these are the words of Jesus himself. That if you do not forgive... You will not be forgiven. And if you're not forgiven, you will not make it to heaven. So in order to make it to heaven, not only do I have to have my sins forgiven, but I've got to be willing to forgive others who have done me wrong. But the Bible never says that we have to forget. You know, the old saying is forgive and forget. Forgiving, although it may be difficult to do, is something that we, we are able to do and something that we must do. But forgetting seems to be something that is impossible to do. I've even heard some say, and I think I've even said it myself, that it's impossible to forget. It's impossible. I can forgive, but I'll never forget. I, I, I'll forgive that person that did that wrong to me, but I'll never be able to forget it. I, I'll forgive that person that upset me, but I'll never forget it. I'll forgive them for what they said and what they've done, but I'll never be able to forget it. It's impossible for me to do that. Well, let me remind you what the Word says, and, and I mentioned it the other night, but Luke 1 and 37, Jesus said, With God nothing shall be impossible. You know, you're right when you say it's impossible for you to forgive. Because it is. But it's not impossible with God. Joseph didn't name his son, I have forgotten. But Joseph said, God hath made me to forget. You may not be able to forget, but you can forgive. And let God take control and let him help you to forget. You've got to say, God, I'm going to forgive that person. I'm going to forgive that situation. But God, you're going to have to get inside this mind. God, you're going to have to get inside this heart. And you're going to have to help me work through this. You're going to have to let me get, let go of some things and help me move on with my life. You know, another old saying we've heard is that time heals all wounds. You know, that may be correct in itself. You know, if I broke my arm, God, I hope I don't. But if I do, you know, I could be Mr. Macho Man. And I could say, I'm not going to the emergency room. I'll just, I'll just tough my way through it. 
And you know, over time, because of the way God made our bodies, my arm would heal. Because that's what our bodies are made to do. They're made to heal themselves. But you know what? My arm, if it's not set, properly set and properly uh, administered to and put in a cast, it may heal, but it may not heal correctly. It may be of, in, of no value later. I may be lamed in my arm. My arm may not function the way it's, it's supposed to because I allow myself to heal it instead of a physician. See, there's wounds that you have here today. And you, some of you are saying, well, time will heal it. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just suffer through it. And God, you know, uh, if I can just hold on a little bit longer, it will heal. You're right, it may heal, but it may not heal correctly. And if you don't allow the great physician to get a hold of what you've got hurt, and you don't allow him to properly set it and properly administer to it, it may heal over time, but it will not heal correctly. And you may be invaluable, and you may not be of any use to the body of Christ. I've come to let somebody know those wounds you've had, those broken things that you've had, if you'll give them to him, you can have a Manasseh moment today, and God will cause you to forget some things. God will deliver you from some weights and some mind problems and some hurts and you can walk out of here a new creature in him. Joseph said, for God hath made me forget. Job eleven sixteen. Job said, because thou hast, thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away. You know, if you go out here to the river and you throw something in the river it's not going to stay there because of the current of the river it won't be just a few seconds and it will be out of sight whatever you threw in the water because of the flow of the river that's what Job's saying it, what, what God is able to do he is able to take what you have and what you've been holding on to, if you'll cast it to him, if you'll cast your cares on him, he's able to take it away like water takes things away. And, and notice, uh, that I think it's uh, amazing because uh, Jesus likens the Holy Spirit not to a lake, not to a pond, not even to the ocean, but he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. See, I may not be able to forget about it, I may be holding on to that hurt, and it may be keeping me from becoming who I want to be in God. It may be something that haunts me daily. It may be something that I look in the mirror and see every day. It may be something that I remind, yes, I've forgiven them. Yes, I've moved on with my life, but I'm not the person that I'm supposed to be. If you'll cast it in the river, if you'll throw it in the water, if you'll allow the Holy Ghost to flow through you, God will take that hurt. God will take that bitterness. God will take that problem. God will take those things that are keeping you, and it will flow out of you today. Isaiah said it like this in Isaiah 43, 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Don't, don't even remember them. For, don't even consider them. Forget about them. Then he goes on to say in Isaiah 65, 16, that he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten. Because they are hid from mine eyes. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. See, before God can do something new in you, you've got to get rid of the old. Before God can create something new, the old has to be done away with. Some of you have been praying, God, do something new in my life. God, burst something inside of me. God, do something amazing in my life. He won't be able to do that as long as you're holding on to the old things. As long as you're holding on to things that are keeping you bound and keeping you weighed down, you've got to have a Manasseh moment today and say, God, I'm putting it in your hands. God, I'm doing what I can't do. I can forgive the situation, but I'm impossible to forget. But you, God, can take 
take the hurt. You, God, can take the problem. You, God, can take the memory. And you can take it and remove it. And you can cause me to forget it. And the old things can pass away. And then, God, you can do something new in my life. How many need God to do something new inside of you today? How many need God to do something new in your mind? New in your heart? New in your marriage? New in your home? New in your body today? I love the words of the Apostle Paul, some of my favorite scriptures in all the Bible. Philippians 3, 13, he said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Notice, he didn't have a to-do list. He didn't have a list of, uh, of New Year's resolutions of what to do. He didn't have a list of uh, the top ten things I need to do to be productive in the kingdom of God. He said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, the Apostle Paul was saying, I don't have to do a bunch of things. I don't have to try to do a, a, a list of things. But if I can just do this one thing, if I can forget my past, if I can forget my mistakes, if I can forget my failures, if I can forget the hurt, if I can forget the things that are keeping me bound, I don't have to make a to-do list because everything will come with what I'm doing right now. See, all it takes is one step today. All you need to do is have a Manasseh moment. And this one thing, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, God is getting ready to give you a breakthrough. God is getting ready to do something amazing in your life. God is getting ready to bless you like you've never been blessed. God is getting ready to anoint you like you've never been anointed if you can just do this one thing forget what's behind and reach forth to your future today the bible says in isaiah 53 5 he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed See, before he ever took that lonely trek to Calvary's hill, before he ever died for our sins, Jesus was wounded for our healing. And I know we take those scriptures and we make them about physical healing, and I believe that God is a physical healer today. But not only did he take the wounds, not only did he take the stripes for our physical healing, but he took the stripes for our mental healing. And spiritual healing also. Because I believe there's more people in here today that need a spiritual and mental healing than they do a physical healing. Never before have we seen what we see in the world today uh, of mental issues and, and spiritual issues. God is here today. And if you allow him to give you a Manasseh moment, you can be healed. Not just physically, but you can be healed spiritually and mentally. Matthew 27 begins to tell us about what happened to him that day. It says, and they stripped him, Matthew 27, 28, and put a, on him a scarlet robe. He was stripped. He was robbed of his robe. Why? So that we could not only forgive, but we could forget about those that have stri stripped us and stolen from us. So you got to understand, they stripped him down to sheer nudity. They stripped him down and left him open for shame and open for ridicule and open for embarrassment. And you know why he did that? It's so that what has happened to you, those that have ripped some things from you, those that have stolen, and I'm not just talking about uh, stealing things, uh, physical items. I, I'm not just talking about that. Yes, I believe that you're, you're able, if you're holding on to a grudge because somebody stole your lawnmower, I believe God can give you a Manasseh moment for it today. But I want to go a little bit deeper than just physical things. Because some of you had things stolen from you when you were children. 
Some of you had your innocence stolen. Some of you had your, 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 uh, your, your purity stolen from you. Some of you had things stolen from you at young ages, and it was ripped from you. It wasn't something you, you, you were involved in. It wasn't something that you wanted to do, but people have hurt you, and people have stolen from you, and people have taken your life, and people have taken the best years of your life and ripped them from you and stole them from you and stripped you down there. But God allowed himself to go through that so that you could forgive and forget about those that have stri stripped you down and those that have stolen from you. And notice the next thing that they did to him. They plotted a crown of thorns and they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They put the crown of thorns on his head. See, that's symbolic today of him being wounded for our, our minds, our mental issues, the problems that we face in our head. See, God wants you to have a Manasseh moment so that you could forget all the mental I images and memories that haunt you to this day. See, some of you, you've forgiven the person that did things to you, but that memory is still etched in your mind. That memory is still there, and it haunts you to this day. But I've got news for you. He took the crown of thorns on his head so that you could be healed in your mind today. See, the Bible tells us in Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you which also was in Christ Jesus. Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of what? Not your body, not your finances, but a renewing of your mind. See, that is where the battle is today. It's in your mind. The, the, the reason why Satan attacks your mind so much, I don't know about you, but he doesn't really uh, attack my finances as much or, or my family as much or my marriage as much or my body as much as he attacks my mind. You don't want to know why he attacks our mind so strongly? That's because that is where God speaks to us. I don't know about anybody else. Maybe some of you, you've had, you've had this booming voice that sounded like thunder come out of heaven when God speaks to you. I've never experienced that. When God speaks to me, it's usually a still, small voice in my mind. But if the enemy understands that if I can clog up their mind and I can haunt their memories... And I can get their minds so polluted with the past and so polluted with memories and so polluted with things that have went wrong in their life that if I can get their minds so much full of garbage that the Holy Ghost won't be able to come in and God will not be able to speak. But I've got news for you today. God is going to give you a Manasseh moment if you'll let him today. And he took the crown of thorns on his head so that you could be healed in your mind. You don't have to carry those memories out of here today. You don't have to carry those pictures out of here today. You can be delivered of those things that haunt you today. See, it's not God's will for us to be dependent on prescription drugs to be able to make it. I, don't, I, I understand we have to take medicine for certain things, but it's not God's will for us to be so messed up in our minds that I can't make it without medicine. You know what? We need less medication and less meditation, and we need more Manasseh moments. I believe God. I believe one moment in God's presence this morning. I believe one moment, one Manasseh moment in this altar today before you leave can heal every thought, can heal every memory, can heal every hurt, and you can walk out of here with your mind sharper than it's ever been, clearer than it's ever been. What's been haunting you can release you today if you'll let God give you that Manasseh moment. The Bible doesn't stop there because it says in verse 30 that they spit upon him. I don't, I, I don't know if I can think of anything lower than somebody spitting on you. I, I had a cousin one time that spit on me when I was a kid, and I went crazy on him. And I'm not going to lie to you, preacher or no. If you spit on me, I'm probably going to lay my Holy Ghost down for a minute.
But see, Jesus allowed them to spit on him. Can you imagine our Savior? He's bloodied and bruised, and his body is torn apart. And, that, and like that wasn't bad enough. He's bleeding, you know, he's, he's falling from the weight of the cross, and he's tripping, and, he's, and, and the, the dirt is, is, is mixing with the, the blood and the sweat and turning to mud on his body. And, and can you imagine the pain of the sand and, and open wounds? And it's not like that's not bad enough, but he allowed people to spit on him. And the reason why I believe today that he allowed people to spit on him is so that we could forgive and forget and be healed of the things that people have said to us in our past. I believe that spitting on him was God saying, one day somebody's going to have some things that's been said about them. One day somebody's going to have some things that's been said to them. And they're going to need to be healed from that. And I love my creation so much that I'm willing to take that on me so that they can be healed. See, there's some of you here today, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not Brother Leach. I'm not here to try to prophesy and mess with your past. I, 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 I want you to get past your past today. I'm not wanting to mess with it. I, I want you to be delivered from it. But there's some of you here, you've been told your entire life that you're a mistake. You've been told your entire life that you're a failure. You've been told by your parents that they didn't want you, that they wish you would have never been born. Some of you have been told by your spouses that they hate you and they wish they'd have never married you. Some of you have been told by family and friends that they wish that you weren't a part of their family. Some of you have had horrible things said to you and about you. But I've got news for you today. That hurt that you've carried around for so long, that, that, that hurt that's inside of you, Jesus took the spitting on you so that you could have a Manasseh moment today and you could walk out of here and say, I'm free from words. I'm free from the things that have been said about me. I'm free from those hurtful things that I remember from my childhood. I'm free today because Jesus allowed himself to be spit upon. I love how Jesus addresses the crowd in Matthew 5 because he says, you've heard that it has been said Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you. Jesus said, in other words, it doesn't matter what other people say. It's what I say. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's a part of having a Manasseh moment. God, those that have cursed me, those that have called me names, those that have made fun of me and ridiculed me, God, if I can have a Manasseh moment, I'll be able to pray for them. I'll be able to bless them. I will be able to love my enemies today. You ought to try loving your enemies. It'll blow their mind. You ought to try praying for your enemy. It worked for Job. That's when God turned the captivity of Job was when he prayed for his for those that were causing him trouble. And then the Bible didn't just say that he was spit upon, but it said that he took the reed. They took the reed and they smote him on the head. See, that smiting that he took, that beating that he took, was he took that beating so that we could be healed and we could forgive and forget those who have abused us. I dare say in a crowd this size, from all different types of backgrounds and walks of life, that there's some of you that have been physically abused as children. There's some of you that maybe are still being physically abused today, whether it's by a, 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 a husband, whether it's by parents, whether it's by a, 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 a family members when you were a child. Some of you have been physically and sexually abused. And I want to tell you something today. We serve a God who allowed himself to be beaten so that you could be healed from the abuse that you are t have taken in your life. 
See, some of you thought you were past it. Some of you thought you'd move past it, but really it was just a scab. And you know what? That's good. I'm here to pick the scab off because you don't need to just let it scab over today. You need to allow God to give you a Manasseh moment and say, God, I want to walk out of this place freer than I've ever been. God, I want to walk out of this place healed by your power. God, I want to walk out of this place not only forgiving people, but forgetting what has been done to me, God. See, Jesus, once again in Matthew 5, said, you've heard it's been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, resist not evil. Whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn also the other also. See, you've got to be saying, God, if somebody's going to do that to me, I'm just going to be willing, God, to do what you told me to do. I'm going to be willing to forgive and forget. And then, after they hung him on the cross and he died, the last thing they did to him in John 19 records in verse 34 that one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. I've always wondered why water came out with the blood. And I, I did some study and some research and I think I figured out why. This is what the research I found. It says that people that endure such beatings as Jesus did would often go into hypovolemic shock, a term that refers to low blood volume. In other words, the person would have lost so much blood he would go into a shock. There is evidence from Scripture that Jesus experienced hypovolemic shock as a result of being flogged. Prior to his death, the sustained rapid heartbeat caused by hypovolemic shock also causes fluid to gather in around the sac of the heart. This gathering of fluid in the membrane around the heart is called periocardial infusion, and the water that flowed probably represented periocardial fluid. The appending acute heart failure would explain the blood that would have originated from the right atrium of the right ventricle. This would explain why after Jesus died and a Roman soldier thrust a spear through Jesus' side, that blood and water flowed from the heart because in essence, Jesus died from a broken heart. See, what you've got to understand, far worse than the beating he took, far worse than being spit upon, Far worse than a crown of thorns being put on his head. Far worse than being stretched out and having rusty nails drove into his hands and his feet. Far worse than all those things was he took every single sin that had ever been committed or ever would be committed upon himself. He took every homosexual, every prostitute, every murderer, every child molester, every sin. He took the sins of Hitler. He took the sins of us, you and I today. He took every single sin ever committed, and he became that sin. So is there any wonder why he died of a broken heart? But you know why he died of a broken heart? He suffered heartbreak so that you could forgive and forget about your heartbreak today. His heart was broken so that you could forget about the things that have broken your heart today. I believe there's some people here today, you've suffered from heartbreak. Your heart has been shattered in a million pieces. I've got great news for you today. God allowed himself to die on a cross from heartbreak so that you could forgive and forget those that have broken your heart. Psalms 34 and 18 says, The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart, and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. Psalms 51, 17, set the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken a, and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise. That same scripture I want to read to you in the Message Bible because I love it. It says, I learned God worship when my pride was shattered. Heart shattered life's ready for love. Don't for a moment escape God's notice. Psalms 147 and 3, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth their wounds. Luke 4 and 18, the prophecy of Isaiah being fulfilled. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because He had sent me to heal the broken hearted. He is here to heal your heart today. 
He is here to heal your brokenness today. He is here if you'll allow him to give you a Manasseh moment, what's broke your heart, what has broken your life, what has broken your dreams and shattered your life, God can heal you and you can walk out of here and say, I've had a Manasseh moment. I'm going to forgive and forget those things that are keeping me from becoming who he wants me to be. See, Jesus said it best in Matthew 20, 12 and 34. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. See, if you're wounded in your heart, you're going to speak words of wounding. That's probably why you're wounded today, because someone spoke to you from a wounded heart, and their words hurt you because somebody else's words hurt them, and it's a never-ending chain. That's why you've got to have a Manasseh moment and say, God, I need you to heal my heart. I need you to heal my mind. I need you to heal my attitude. God, I need you to heal my outlook. I need you to heal my thoughts. I need you to heal me today, God. You know, I've had several friends here recently that got bit by poisonous snakes. One little boy, preacher friend of mine's son, is in the intensive care unit in Little Rock, Arkansas right now was bitten a few days ago. But you know what? If you get bit by a poisonous snake, you can do one of two things. You can go find a phone and call 911 or get in your car and get to the emergency room ASAP. Or you know what else you can do? You can say, you know what? I'm going to find that snake. I'm going to chase that snake down, and I'm going to get even with it. I'm going to cut that snake's head off. I'm going to get him back for a bite. And you know what happens while you're trying to find that snake? And while you're chasing that snake down, that poison is flowing through your blood. And you know what happens? You may kill the snake, but the snake has killed you. The same thing holds true in the spiritual. You can say, I'm going to get even with somebody that's hurt me. I'm going to get somebody back. And you know what? You may get them back one day, but you are also going to end up dying spiritually yourself. And on the flip side of that, you can say, you know what? I'm just going to call the great physician, and I'm going to allow him to pour some healing ointment into my life. And I'm going to have a Manasseh moment, and I'm going to forget about all the mess that's happened. I'm going to forget about all the hurt that's happened, and I'm going to walk out of here a new creature in him today you cannot get ahead by getting even and I want to call you and I'm almost done I'm drawing too close I want to call your attention back to our original scripture in Genesis 41 51 it says and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh for God said he hath made me forget all of my toil and all of my father's house but notice verse 52, he had another son. That second son he named Ephraim. Why? For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Notice he didn't name the first son Ephraim. He named the first son Manasseh. Because he realized that if I'm ever going to have an Ephraim, I've got to first have a Manasseh. If I'm ever going to have, be fruitful, I've got to let God help me to forget some things. I want to tell somebody today, if you ever want to be fruitful in the kingdom of God, if you ever want to have an Ephraim experience, you've got to first have a Manasseh moment. You have got to let God help you to forget some things. Then will you be fruitful. You will never be, you'll never have an Ephraim before you have a Manasseh. You always have to have your Manasseh first. Then you can have an Ephraim. See, that, like I just referenced to you about Job, that's what happened to Job. Because the Bible says that he turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And God gave him what? Twice as much as he had before. See, you can't tell me that Job didn't have a Manasseh moment. He had to have a Manasseh moment in order to be able to pray for his friends. Something I read a few weeks ago, it says the first to apologize is the bravest. The first to forgive is the strongest. But the first to forget is the happiest. Don't let the shadows of your past darken the doorstep of your future, but forgive and forget today. It's far better to forgive and forget than to hate and remember. And in closing, as we all stand today, I want to draw your attention to Paul's words. Because this is one way to learn how to forget some things. 
in Philippians 4 and 7, he says, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know one of the best ways to have a Manasseh moment and to forget about things is not to think about them anymore. If you'll think on these things and not those things, You'll forget about it eventually. And you know, another thing, another way to easily forget about what happened is not only to stop thinking about it, but stop talking about it. Stop rehearsing it. Stop talking about it over and over and over and over again. Let it go and let God deliver you of it today. See, sometimes to forget something doesn't mean that you can't remember it anymore. It's not always about you can't remember it. Sometimes when God lets you forget something, it just means that you're not influenced or controlled by it anymore. So you may walk out of here today and you may still have the memory, but when you think of it, it doesn't take you back to that place anymore because the chains have fallen off of you because you had a Manasseh moment and you have forgiven and forgotten those things that have hurt you in your life. And one more scripture, Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, God speaking, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. We are never more like God than when we forgive and forget. You want to be Christ-like today? Learn how to forgive and forget because God is a God that forgets past mistakes God I want to have a Manasseh moment here this morning God help me to forgive people and things and events and things help me to forgive not only other people but God help me to forgive myself today see that's where a lot of the battle is we, 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 we're quick to forgive others but we can't forgive ourselves today but God let me have a Manasseh moment because I want to have an Ephraim experience. God, I want to be blessed in your kingdom. I want our church to be blessed. I want my family to be blessed. I want my ministry to be blessed. I want my marriage to be blessed. I want everything in my life to be blessed, but I cannot have an Ephraim experience until I have a Manasseh moment. So as we all bow our heads and close our eyes all across this auditorium today, If you're here in this place and you want to have a Manasseh moment, this altar is open for you right now. If there's some things that have kept you bound, some things that have happened to you that you've not been able to let go of, God's here to help you today. God's here to take that weight off of you. You don't have to carry it any longer. You don't have to walk out of here bound by your past and bound by hurts and pains. He became that hurt. He became that pain. So if he paid the price for that mistake and he paid the price for that hurt, it belongs to him because he's purchased it. And if you carry it out of here today, you're stealing from God because you don't, it don't belong to you anymore. Come on, if you need to be lifted up today, if you need some things lifted off of your shoulders, if you need some things taken from your mind today, if you need to have a Manasseh moment, would you please come to this altar and lay it down at his feet and say, I don't want to carry it around anymore. Hallelujah. Come on, I know the enemies whispered in some of your ears and said, don't go down there. People think there's something wrong with you. Don't, don't, don't go down there. You've been in church your entire life. People think you're backslid. Don't go down there. You're in the ministry. People think that you're, you're, you're giving up on your ministry. No, no, no. If you need to have a Manasseh moment, I don't care who you are today, you need to come to this altar and say, God, I don't want to walk out of this place the same way that I walked in. Hallelujah. Come on, God's in the business of helping you to forget today. Hallelujah. 
Come on, he wants to take the weight that you've been carrying around for so long. God, I want to have a Manasseh moment so you'll give me an Ephraim experience, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, he took the crown of thorns for your mental issues. He was spit upon for those that have spoken against you. He was beat for those that have been abused. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down, well, glory, glory. Give him another praise today. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, God, for giving us a Manasseh moment today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, if you're here today and you've never repented of your sins, you need to repent because that is saying I'm letting go of who I used to be. And then you need to be baptized in a watery bapti uh, baptismal tank in water, completely submerged in water, in the only name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved, the name of Jesus. You want to know why? Because that water washes away the old. It washes away the past. It washes away who you used to be. And when you come out of that water, you are a brand new creature in Christ. And then the Bible tells us if you'll do those two things, that you are promised a gift from God, and that is His Holy Spirit to come live inside of you. And what better way than for you to get rid of the bad and get rid of the hurt and get rid of the memories than for the Holy Spirit to come in and wash through you and take control of your life. So if you're here today and you've not repented, you've not been baptized in His name, you've not been filled with this Holy Ghost, you need to do those things today. If you've not been baptized, you can see pastor or one of these other ministers after service, and they can baptize you in Jesus' name, and God will give you the gift of the Holy Ghost, and your life will be forever changed. And what a great Manasseh moment you can have today. Amen. We're so thankful for what God did. Thank you to each and every one of you that are here. Thank you to our guests. We want to say thank you for being here. Hope you'll be back again tonight. And we want to encourage everyone to be back tonight. Six o'clock, come early for prayer if you can. And expecting God to do something amazing in this place tonight. Can we close right now in prayer? Let's all bow our heads and let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your power and your spirit that we feel in this place. God, we thank you for giving us a Manasseh moment. Now, God, give us an Ephraim experience tonight, God. Let us be fruitful. God, we ask you to anoint us, touch us. God, let us leave this place challenged and changed by your word. God, let us come in tonight expecting you to do great things. Keep everyone safe today as they travel. Bring us all back tonight. God, and we're coming back. Hey, this is Chris Soward, Senior Pastor at the Open Door Apostolic Church. I want to take this moment to invite you and your family to come be in service with us at the Open Door. Open Door is a place where the Word of God is preached without apology, and we're not intimidated to worship the Lord. If that's something you're looking for, come visit us. You're going to love it. We'll see you at the Open Door. God bless. Let creation sing